San Antonio has been called one of America's most unique cities. Most say we're unique because of the ambience of harmony we enjoy. Harmony created by our culture. A culture where Anglos, Hispanics, African Americans, and all other ethnicities work together, prosper together, and thrive. But it wasn't always that way. Hispanics had to fight for their place at the table, and the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce led the charge almost 85 years ago. In the 1920s, there was a large movement of professionals, of journalists, of academics from Mexico to the United States and to San Antonio. These were serious people. These were people who were you know, not only strong-willed, but intellectually capable of, of, of building things and sustaining them. So we were fortunate to have that uh, segment of society arrive here. These were people who were not going to be kept down. These were people who were not going to be put down. And they decided to create their own institutions. People like uh, Mr. Charles Alvarez, who used to run the Alvarez Furniture Company on the near west side. Dr. Chapa, who had the pharmacy and who had been a leader in Mexico. My grandfather, who by now was creating his own printing company. Uh, uh, Mr. Ignacio Lozano, who was the publisher of La Prensa. The Cortez family that created KCOR. The COR stands for Cortez. Um, they came together and created their own business organization, locked out of the chambers of commerce, country clubs, and the other establishments of the period in San Antonio, uh, which were still dominated by the ranching, petroleum, landowning elite of San Antonio, not willing to give much opening. Uh, these folks created their own entity. These were proud people who were not accustomed to being treated as second-class citizens and were not going to be. That's uh, what they were leaving Mexico to avoid and they were not going to repeat that experience here. This is a city that uh, until the 1950s and probably the 60s had not come to terms with the fact that you could not build a great city and keep it in the hands of a few people. There were great names, uh, Callison, Frost, uh, McAllister, uh, great families um, who built great institutions, but opening up to a new group of people was not their specialty. So it was uh, imperative that this Hispanic chamber be formed and that these men and women were able to make themselves known to the community and to say, I'm here, I can do business in this community, uh, I can serve a great purpose, and uh, I want to succeed. It goes back to the understanding of how far we've come, because we as Latinos have come a long way in this community and, and throughout the country, frankly. I think the turning point was Hemisphere, when all of a sudden the city decided, if we're gonna keep up, with Dallas, Houston, Denver, Atlanta, the booming Sunbelt Southern places, then we're gonna to have to treat this city differently. It's really uh, phenomenal that from that little kind of close-knit group to, a, to an organization now of uh, 1,500 people. We had a lot of coverage when I made president, TV, radio, media. Cabra Mexicana de Comercio, when I first became president, I was only, I was the second woman president, uh, and that was in 1984. The biggest challenge for me was keeping the doors open. Back in the 80s, uh, we used to have, hold our meetings, our board meetings, and our meetings, executive committee meetings, at Audrey's Restaurant, uh, you know, and that uh, ran by Benny Cantu. The logo was basically Cámara de Comercio Mexicana on the top of, of the, the Mexican eagle, we had a staff of two people, and it was a very rough year. There was a very little budget, very small budget, and of course, uh, two staff earning minimal salary. The city council had just changed their form of government. They were elected by districts, and so the city council went from two or three minorities out of nine 
to a majority of minorities, six out of 11. And things started to turn around. They had a new city manager. He was looking for some help. And I got the opportunity. When I walked into my first executive team meeting, though, at City Hall, I walked in, there was 30 men in there, no women, only two other Latinos besides me, and two African Americans. And that was it. Uh, when we asked the city, well, how much are you purchasing from Hispanic business? Basically, it was less than a quarter of a percent going to Hispanic business. Eventually, under Alex Brezeno's leadership, it went from something less than 1% almost 30%. We changed the name to Hispanic to cover uh, a broader uh, group of Latinos. The name helped embrace the entire Hispanic community in the one unified way of thinking. The Hispanic Chamber is not just for Hispanics. It's also for anybody who wants to do business with Hispanics. And if you're doing business in San Antonio, you're gonna be doing business with Hispanics. You had a showcase now for Hispanic leaders to be seen in the public amongst other business leaders in the community. We worked hard with City Hall to pay attention to what contracts were being awarded and appointing the first Latina to CPS Energy and you know meeting with a mayor and, and once a month and carrying issues forward about education and trade missions to Mexico and, and then helping small businesses get certified to do business with the city, the county, the state, and the federal government. Once I started going to the chambers, I realized that there were so many other people that were in the same boat. And so, just by finding people with the same problems, it just made it so much easier, because you're not alone. And the men and women that aspire to be businessmen and look for a place where they can feel comfortable, where they can go and get knowledge, where they can go and receive the training and the exposure in, in this city it's, has been so vital. We set a goal to reach a thousand members in five years time from when I started and we were able to achieve that within three years time and so it was very very exciting to have those kinds of results. We went from uh, nine staff members to over 16 while I was there. We increased 60 percent in revenue uh, with our team doing such a tremendous job in partnership with our board and everybody was pulling the cart in the same direction. In 2004, our board started with an orientation by Steve Murdoch about the changing demographics of the state and what would happen even back then if indeed we weren't giving enough educational opportunities and, and increasing the uh, educational attainment of our community. And so the board solidified around that cause you know, we'd have a discussion about this and they'd say, you know, folks, education can solve a lot of these problems. And, and I'm a product of what we have accomplished. Uh, from being a, a businessman to becoming uh, one of the largest suppliers to Toyota, uh, hiring, hiring uh, our people on the south side mainly, uh, changing their lives to have better jobs and to have futures and to have 401ks and to have uh, medical and dental and optical benefits. And so I think all of us that have had the good blessings of being able to succeed in our endeavor, I think it's something that we just feel very, very strong about, about giving back to, to San Antonio. Con mucho corazón, you know, we, we do it because we, we love the city. We do it because we love the people that we work with. We see the commitment from the uh, people that work at the chamber, not just the, the president or the vice president, but everybody that works here. One of the things that we continue to do is to uh, support, advocate, identify, develop leaders and for various aspects of the community, not only business-wise, but government-wise, uh, political, uh, and community leaders. And it's important for our young Latinos in leadership positions today to realize that their successes have been supported by the sacrifices of others in the past and that they need to continue to be those role models, those examples and those mentors for the future, for Latinos in the future to move forward in the future and continue to do great things for our community and for our nation. There's so much work to do, so we just cannot go home and watch the TV. There's so much work, no? We have to, to, hasta que aguanten las piernas, we will go to help. I think I feel that way because I am the lucky one, no. 
no se vale. Everybody should have a chance. And that's how I feel. Pues ya me voy. Oh.